Well, I've made my fair share of mistakes with tractors over the years, and so at a risk of sounding like a fool, I'm gonna go ahead and share those with you to try to help you avoid those same mistakes in your own tractor adventures. So if you would, please take it easy on me, okay? You know, I learned best from kind of doing things, you know, not so much sitting in a classroom and, and reading about it, but actually being out there in the field and in the woods and wherever it might be, just making those mistakes the hard way. I've always been that way, but it works for me. Sometimes they're an expensive lesson, but you know what? I seldom forget that and make the same mistake twice. And I know I'm not the only one here, so go ahead and make sure you leave a comment below. Give us some other input there on other mistakes that we can all avoid as we're going through our tractor journey. Hey, if you like what you see here, would you consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video? Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of helpful links down there. And check out the other videos on my channel. You might like those too. Here we go. Let's pay close attention to this area, this black mesh area right here, okay? Now, I have been guilty of this on more than one occasion, sometimes out of forgetfulness, sometimes out of laziness, sometimes I don't know why. But if you're out brush hogging or tilling or doing a lot of work, especially in the summertime, the dead of summer when things are dry, a lot of um, seed out there, a lot of stem count, everything else, you're going through a lot of high brush areas, well, it is very easy for this whole entire screen here to get clogged full of clippings, of seed heads, of debris, whatever it might be, okay? What happens when that occurs is then your engine temperature is going to rise. And yeah, you always want to be paying attention, monitoring your, monitoring your engine temperature, but it's still easy to overlook. And sometimes you need to get off and clean the screen off more often than you would think, which can be kind of annoying when you're in the middle of a long project. Fortunately, I've never overheated to the point of having the machine shut down on me, but it could have been a close call, and I'm sure some of you, in fact, I've seen it in the comments before, you know, where these machines have just stopped working right in the middle of the field due to an issue like this. So something for you to check out and keep your eye on. You know, so I'm guilty of causing property damage, okay? And uh, I've done it to my own garage right here, right up top. Yeah, this is it. Trying to get a roll bar underneath here, you know, like I just thought it was going to fit. No, <laughs> I uh, had the roll bar up and totally forgot that I had it up and went driving in here and then it stopped and I was like, what the heck am I hitting on the ground? I kept looking down thinking there's got to be something that I'm, that I'm hung up on or the loader right in front of the bucket, you know, I must not see something there. No, it was this. It was just, just doing some damage here. So pulled off all of this uh, trim work around here. I also hit the side of the garage door with a snow pusher, you know, the tracking for the garage door system where I had to have that uh, kind of hammer back into place there. So the track would still work. My father-in-law did the same thing with a tractor bucket. My son's done the same thing with a tractor bucket on the side of a garage. So yeah, we are definitely guilty of property damage around here, but what are you going to do? Lessons learned, right? Or well, maybe not. Well, you know, so a dumb one that I've done, you know, I'm guilty of it. I preach about it. I preach about it. I preach about it. Ballast weight. Okay. So I have picked up both rear wheels, not very high, but I picked up run one rear wheel <laughs> multiple times. It is a horrible situation. You know, I've certainly learned my lesson, at least I hope. Um, I've never been in any danger of tipping a tractor over, fortunately, which can be seriously deadly. So make sure you check out the ballast weight videos, but you need to have adequate counterweight on the back of your tractor when you're using your front end loader, okay? And so I had this happen in my yard actually a few years ago. Um, I was gonna store some loaders here that I was gonna install on some tractors and I just picked the first tractor that was nearby, threw a set of forks on it and went to uh, pick off the loaders off the trailer and then just set them down here in the yard. That was a bad move because those things were just, I mean, you know, any kind of undulation where it's not a perfectly level yard and that thing is up a little bit higher or a little bit further out than you want from the base of your loader, it's a very uneasy feeling when you start to have that little tipping sensation go on. So I'm serious. Check out the ballast weight videos. You got to have way more ballast weight than you think. This is a two series tractor we're staring at. You'd be surprised, but you have to have 12 or 1300 pounds of ballast weight minimum, okay, minimum to offset your loader on the front end. You know, so I'm up here in Michigan, it gets pretty darn cold in the wintertime. And so because of that, we need to have our fuel treated, our diesel fuel treated in the wintertime to prevent gelling of that diesel fuel, which will happen at lower temperatures. So I get a lot of tractors from southern states where the diesel that's down there, you know, if you go get it at a fuel station, is not going to be treated for winter diesel, you know, like what we have up here, maybe in October, November, all the way through the spring. And I've been guilty multiple times of forgetting to please ask the dealers that I'm buying from down there to add some, some treatment, some fuel treatment to the diesel tank itself. Because what will happen is your fuel system will end up 
gelling up or freezing, you know, if you want to call it that. But basically it's going to happen typically somewhere that's going to be around this area here in the fuel lines where there's a very small amount of fuel going through there. And, you know, it's a very frustrating problem when you have tractors on a trailer that you can't get off in the middle of the winter because the, the whole fuel system's bound up, you know. So I've done that more than one time and, you know, you think it's not going to happen to me until it does. So you can get a cheap bottle of the preventative, you know, to put in there. It'll last you for a whole tank, you know, or for a few tanks and handles the problem. So I encourage you when fall comes around, put it on your list to add some fuel treatment to your fuel tank. One of the scariest things that I did happen right here on this driveway when one time uh, years ago, uh, a customer had pulled their or backed their trailer up right here on the slope, truck facing downhill, and we were loading up a tractor on the ramps on the back of a trailer, you know, onto their trailer there. And as soon as enough weight got on the back of the trailer, well, it picked up. It was a, um, a hitch pull trailer and it picked up the back end of the truck and everything went sliding right down the hill with me on a set of skinny ramps that were just on the back end of a trailer sliding downhill on, on top of a tractor. So, I mean, just split second, I backed up slowly to get that weight back off of there and get those rear wheels on the ground again on the truck. And fortunately everything was okay, but man, that was a scary experience. So lesson learned, I don't load on hills anymore at all. So one of the more annoying things that I did with a tractor was actually ripping the front tire right off of the rim. And so what actually happened was I had uh, a John Deere 3046R headed out in my woods trying to blaze a new trail and it was a muddy mess and just a tangled gnarly mess and you know I mean I was just ripping it you know and four wheel drive everything spinning constantly kind of was just getting out of control with the machine and it was on a slope of course and so you know things were gradually shifting sideways as they were spinning and uh, I ran one of the front uh, wheels as it was spinning right into the side of a log and I'm just kind of assuming this is what happened is as it was spinning around caught the valve stem right there and just ripped it off and you know air you know the tire went flat and then just came right off the wheel there and pretty much you know I was I don't know 35 40 minutes away from home you know I was out in the woods not even by my, my trailer you know so the whole day was just shot and just kind of put a damper on the plans there. So um, you gotta be aware of that kind of stuff when you're, when you're out in the woods, you know, it's crazy things like that can come up and just put an end to your, to your plans right there. And that was a very frustrating experience. So I'm kind of aware of that ever since that point. So years ago, you know, we had a, a cedar rented, a planter rented to do our fall food plots up in my uh, grandpa's old farm there. And we had the one weekend, that's all they had available late August. And of course it was gonna be a rainy sloppy mess. and. Uh, we were borrowing a tractor. I want to say it was a 2N, but uh, anyways, a two-wheel drive, you know, just, a, just a, a gear shift, and we were doing what we could do. You know, we had everything that we wanted to get planted out there, and we were not going to be stopped. Rain or whatever, we, that's just the time that we had to do it all. And so I had this plot location back in the woods that was a sloppy mess, and, you know, that planter was pretty darn heavy, and it's in, in, engaging the ground, you know, so there's some resistance there. And that mud was just two wheel drive tractor, you know, just, just spinning, just spinning, not doing anything. And uh, it just kept kind of creeping sideways and sideways. And we're surrounded by woods on both sides and behind us. It's just this long skinny strip that we were planting in there, you know, and instead of trying to just lift up the, the cedar, you know, and just get out of there and reset, we just kept, you know, we were, we were young at that point, just kept spinning it. And that thing just slid before you knew it in between the rear tire of the tractor and the planter, there was like three trees, three smaller trees that were definitely way too big to, um, to, to try to do anything about. And it just, everything was all jammed up there and it was just a nightmare. It took us probably over an hour to, to get out of that debacle that we created. And when you, you know, you're traveling three hours away, you have one weekend to get all your stuff done. It's like, you don't need that kind of headache. And we just ended up having to deal with that and make it work, but it sure was a lot of frustration. It's one of those things I still remember when I get into uh, situations like that, that stop, think, slow down before you get into a situation that's gonna cause a lot more headache down the road. Oh, and I forgot, we also ended up ripping off a disc or some component on the back end of that that we had to replace too. So that turned into another costly adventure as well. Okay, so wrong tires for the application. I've been guilty of that multiple times. You know, I kind of, if you didn't know, I have a lot of tractors at my disposal, a constantly rotating inventory. And from time to time, I have a dedicated tractor that I keep for a while, but oftentimes I don't. I'm just using whatever I have in stock. And so, um, 
you know, I've been guilty of using this the wrong setup and, and mainly what this comes down to is, is uh, tires that I want to focus on here because, you know, in the wintertime I have, I have got stuck with these R4 tires uh, in snow banks, you know, where I just could not get out of them. I actually had to use my, my truck to pull uh, a 1025 one time out of the snow bank with these R4 tires. I, I am not a big fan of them on the snow, packed ice, that kind of thing. Uh, I just don't think they work very well. I think turfs work a lot better. I think those hybrid tires work well. Honestly, I think even the AGs work a little bit better than, than the R4s, but you got to be careful with it. Um, you know, you can get tire studs for them, you can get tire chains, that kind of thing. But uh, for me, choosing the wrong tire for the application has been uh, um, an, an evolution, and tires are not an easy thing to change out, right? So certain rim sizes, wheel sizes, you can get multiple tread patterns for them, you know, to fit. Um, but with other sizes of tractors, you have to get a whole different rim size as well if you want to get a different tread pattern on a tire. Another example, you know, mowing lawn one time, um, the, t the tractor that I had in had ag tires on it, the, the actual, you know, old school bar ag tires on there. And well, you know, after a few passes of realizing all of a sudden things are looking a little rough out here, I realized it was the tires that were doing that damage. And uh, so that was one that took a few months to kind of smooth out and heal after I did all that damage. So you got to be aware of the tires for your application. Um, you know, turfs are going to be, they're all going to excel in certain areas, right? You know, and they're going to be better than others. Some are going to wear longer than others. Some are going to do more damage in certain applications. Some are going to be easier to get stuck in certain applications. So you got to be aware of that. Think ahead before you go into those situations and plan for it. You know, as much as I'd like to have a tractor like this John Deere 2038R right behind me, yeah, it's one of my favorites. I love this series here. It just wouldn't be right for me, you know, and I've been guilty of doing that enough times in life, whether it's with tractors or with trucks or with trailers or anything else, where I get the wrong size. And I do that for primarily, I think, monetary reasons, budget reasons, right? And I know I'm not the only one that's guilty of doing this, but I think what it ends up doing is costing you money in the long run, you know? And so, you know, I've, I've gone from a 3E to a 3R to a 4R to a skid steer. You know, it's always, I need more, 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 more. And same thing with trailers, you know, from a, um, a 12 foot, 14 foot, 16 foot, 20 foot, uh, 22 foot, and then now a 33 foot gooseneck. And, you know, I've had a million trailers. But uh, the point being is, is seldom am I, <laughs> am I going in the other direction of downsizing. It seems like I'm always going the other direction of getting bigger and larger and everything else. And it's like, I wonder how much I could have saved in the long run if I would have simply got the biggest, you know, the one that I currently have. And who knows if even what I have now is going to be big enough. Of course, every time I think, yeah, I don't need to go any bigger. This is this is as big as I need right now. But I don't know. Anyway, hindsight's 2020. But if you if you think about it, you know, we all had those budgets to live within. Those constraints there, of course. Sometimes it's it's different reasons why we're getting a tractor of a certain size. But if you can afford to spend a little bit more now and get to to a machine that you you feel very confident in is going to handle all of your needs, you could end up really saving money in the long run, even though it's costing you more money up front. Oh man, look at that. That fuel gauge is on E. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been a long time, but I've had that happen. Now, fortunately, I will say, most of these newer machines are self-priming, okay? So if you do run out of fuel, it's a pretty easy fix. You just go get some more fuel, fill her up, let the machine do its thing, and be back in action, no problem. But way back in the day when I was a youngster growing up, I had didn't pay any attention to anything right you know and i was again on i think it was on my grandpa's eight or nine and he had both i can't remember and i was just out putzing around doing some brush hogging and uh ran out of fuel and of course <laughs> even my grandfather at that point didn't have any fuel on his farm he was all out right then too and we were a half hour from town and there the tractor was out in the field there just dead in the water you know so i still remember that as well you know maybe some of those are just fond memories that you have growing up but uh, it's one of those things that i'm in a tractor, in a truck, whatever it might be, I'm just always much more aware now of the fuel levels of things and uh, still learning to glean from that, that era long ago and, and uh, at the same time holding it close to heart, you know. Well, hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that was enjoyable. Again, if you haven't done so yet, leave a comment below. I know I'm not the only one doing some of these knucklehead things from time to time, so let's help each other out. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Read through that description, seriously. There's also a lot of places you can get discount codes. Discount code GWT, get 5% off your order. A lot of cool places. Read through that description. If you like what you see, watch those other videos on the channel as well. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.